welcome to another edition of the Disciples Forum hosted by MFM Jesus House New York. This is the platform where we discuss real world events, trends, and circumstances and our place as the Lord's disciples in this world. Before we get started, we would like to use this opportunity to thank God Almighty for the gifts of life and salvation through Christ Jesus. We would also like to thank God for the many leaders He continually uses for us, most especially the General Overseer of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry, our Regional Overseer, and the Mother in Israel of this assembly. We pray that the power of God will keep making ways for them in wild and desert places in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take this prayer as we start the discussion. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather and fellowship with brethren. We thank you for this opportunity to know and speak about your power and glory. Lord, we pray that you would bless our discussion, you would bless the words of our mouth, and you would bless our hearers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Once again, this is the Disciples Forum. I am your host, Sister Ola Tosin, and I have with me today six lovely panelists in the person of Sister Peace. Thank you for having me. Brother Adiboye. Thank you for having me. Brother Daniel. Thank you for having me. Sister Oluwatobi. Glad to be here. Brother Adewale. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. And Sister Lighting. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. In today's forum, we will be handling this question. Can wrong ever be right? The context for our discussion is as follows. Many social media outlets, newspapers, platforms, and even influencers, some of which identify as Christian, promote action and lifestyle that are wrong, and wrong as in clearly contradicting God's standard for us as his children. For example, in addition to the dangers and consequences outlined by God in his word, engaging in alcoholism, smoking, or multiple sexual relationships has been associated with many tangible risks to our mental, spiritual, and physical health. Yet, society, in many ways, promotes these damaging behaviors and lifestyles. In other words, they keep posing wrong things as right and acceptable. Our key verse is taken from Proverbs 14, verse 12, which says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now, I invite our panelists to share their views on this topic with any or all of these guided questions. Number one, what are some wrong things society is trying to pose as right? What does the Bible say about making wrong right? Number two, should we base our decisions on what the world says is right or on what the Bible says is right? Number three, how can Christians defend themselves against the manipulation from the world that may slowly push them to believing wrong is right? Let's start with Sister Peace. Sister Peace, let's please have your view. Thank you for having me. Some of the wrong things society is trying to pose as right are homosexuality, seductive dressing, abortion, changing pronouns, and all sorts of other sins. As for what the Bible says about making wrong right, in Romans 1, the Bible addresses people who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Verse 28 goes on to state their verdict, stating, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. This is to tell us that those who choose to make wrong right or believe these false manipulations, God will lead them to their lies and allow them to bask in their deceit and defilement. We should not base our decision based on what the world says is right. Why base your decisions on the words of the creation when you can base it on the word of the creator? The sad truth is that many people no longer have a mind of their own. They think they do. But they are so quick to follow every trend that pops up. Buy the newest shoes, the newest bag, do what celebrities are doing, and turn away from the truth they've been told in favor of feeling accepted by the world. Social media and trends control their minds. If the new trend is to partake in immorality, they do it without hesitation. Yet, they claim they are woke and in control of themselves. Are these the people one wants to look to for a basis of what is right or wrong? God forbid. In order for Christians to defend themselves against this manipulation, we must look to Proverbs 4.23, which says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. This is to warn us as Christians to be careful what we watch, 
believe, listen to, or even the friends we have, so it doesn't pollute our hearts and thereby lead us to living a life against God's word. Even John 2.24 tells us that Jesus did not allow himself to be enraptured by people because he knew their superficial and sinful nature. We as Christians aiming to be like Christ should do the same, following Christ and our Lord and his word in the Bible. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Peace, for sharing that view. Let's now hear from Brother Adam Thank you for having me. Can wrong ever be right? Absolutely not. The scripture makes us to understand that in the last day of which we are now, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. This is the reason why we need to bet and see what comes into our heart through what we listen to, through what we watch on daily basis, because these have the capacity to shape our lives positively or otherwise. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Meaning, we are all products of what we constantly and habitually listen or watch. It is very sad that people in the media that we look up to are the proponents of all these evil ideas. The simple question we tend that I will need to ask them is, if Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by God because of homosexuality, how and why should any right-thinking person, let alone Christian, be part of this evil thing? It is rather sad that some states in this country even legalized the use of marijuana, branding it as a recreational marijuana. What is so recreational about marijuana? I don't know. Without thinking of how damage it will cause for the psyche of the people in the, in the state. Some even believe that not until they pull people down, they can never be successful in life. This is the lie of the devil from the pit of hell. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof be at the way of death. How can Christians defend themselves? It is by studying the word of God. Psalm 119, 11 says, The word have I hid in my heart that I shall not, that I might not sin against thee. We need to go to the scripture and know what God loves and what, what God is by knowing the right from wrong. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Brother Adiboye, for sharing that careful opinion. Let's now hear from Brother Daniel. Thank you for having me. In these modern times, society has become more wayward and radical, promoting ideas and practices that are contrary to God's divine instruction. One of these ideas that has become more prevalent is materialism, which emphasizes material possessions and the pursuit of wealth as a sort of status symbol or instant gratification. Another idea that has become heavily promoted is hypersexualization, mainly towards women as they are encouraged to portray themselves as sex objects in an effort to seem more independent and in control of their own lives. However, these practices contradict God's word, as the Bible repeatedly encourages the believers to deviate from the standards of the world, which is reflected in Proverbs 17 verse 15, as those who justify wrongdoing and are critical of righteousness are seen as an abomination to the Lord. One should base the decisions on scripture, as it's not just any ordinary book, but a guide for living a positive and impactful life. In the world, views on various topics are inconsistent and subject to change based on trends and opinions. But the Bible is a non-changing doctrine that provides principles that allow us as Christians to stay on the right path. Christians can defend themselves from manipulation of the world by being steadfast to God's unchanging word and challenging the world's fallible beliefs. Reflecting Ephesians 6 verse 16, we must take up the shield of faith, like soldiers in battle, and stand firm against the devious plans of the world, meant to move us away from God's path. We must remain committed to the truth, and ally with the strong foundation of God's word. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Daniel, for sharing that perspective with us. Let's now hear from Sister Oluwatobi. Thanks for having me. Some wrong things society tries to pose as right are abortion, improper and disgusting dressing, dressing, 
from both men and women of this generation and the narrative that sleeping with different men and women is empowering and unhealthy. The Bible says in Numbers 5-7 that he that wrongs it right, they must confess their sins and make full restitution for what they've done, adding an additional 20% and returning it to the person they've wronged. We should 100% base our decisions on what the Bible says instead of what the world says. God speaks to his people in many ways, and the word is one of those ways. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and to the division of the soul and of spirit, of joint and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and into of the heart. As children of God, the Bible is our truth and our guideline to life. So if the Bible says it is wrong, then it is wrong. No in between, no matter what. A way Christians can defend themselves against manipulation from the world is to stand firm in their beliefs and what the doctrine of the word of God says. We should not let the things of the world or people of this world bend the truth from which we know, which is God Almighty. The Bible says in Romans 12 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another way to defend ourselves is to understand the type of God we serve. For the Bible says in Daniel 11:32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. When we fully understand the God we serve, we will see and know the evil agenda that the enemy is pushing in this generation. And we will not be surprised when it happens. In Psalm 37, 12 to 13, it says, The wicked make evil plans against good people. They grind their teeth at them in anger. But the Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day is coming. I pray that God Almighty will give us all the grace and strength to be strong and steadfast. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Watobi, for sharing. Let's now hear from Brother Adewale. Thank you. The mystery and the origin of posting wrong things as right in human communities in every generation can be traced to the fall of man in the Garden of Eden and the influence of the spiritual Babylonian authority over humanity. This is the foundation of all the confusion, the madness, the wickedness, pollution, defilement, compromise, witchcraft, spiritual carelessness, deceitfulness, hatred, arrogancy, and all the ungodliness in humans and non-human creatures. The Bible says the nations are mad. Jeremiah 51 verse 7. Believers must understand that they are brilliant, eloquent, highly educated, celebrated, well-funded aliens among humans. They are in the government, medical field, education, science and technology, entertainment and social media. Their mission is to establish wrong things as right in every aspect of human society. All the gender confusion, ungodly medical invention and practices, political brokahas around the world, spiritual insanity, academic confusion, and social media madness are the examples of the wrong things established as right in our world today. The major biblical provision to deal with this issue for believers is the ministry of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Holy Spirit, knowledge, application, and declaration of God's word. John chapter 14, verse 26, John chapter 8, verse 32, and Daniel eleven thirty-two. May the Lord God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Adewale, for sharing that view. Let's finally hear from Sister Alagi. Thanks for this opportunity. There are a lot of wrong things in our society today that the world is posing as right under the disguise of freedom to choose or be what you want to be, which include abortion rights, right to decide self-identified gender, right to have sex outside marriage, either as teenagers or adults, right to have tattoos. The list is endless. It is sad that most of these wrong decisions are being made at the seat of power. Satan has turned itself into an epidemic and is eating deep into our society daily. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. The way of the world is the way of death. Romans 1, 28 says, 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Whoever rejects God is expected to do things that are not convenient. We cannot base our decisions on what the world says is right because we're not of this world. The Bible says we are chosen generations according to 1 Peter 2, 9. We are to bring forth the praise of God, not of the devil. We are to follow the word of God, not the world. Believers should be careful with the phrase, it doesn't matter, a little here or there. Christians can only defend themselves with the word of God. The Bible clearly stated in John 8, 32 that, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We must be intentionally careful and watchful. There's a spiritual battle against true believers. We shall be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Lydie, and to all of our panelists for blessing us with those views and opinions. So the conclusion of the matter, for a believer, no, wrong can never be right. Because the way that seems right to man is the way of the world. The way that does not care for the standard of God, but for whatever can be trending or gain the most activity on pages and platforms. Moreover, some of us don't want to believe or value all of God's word. Just the parts that are convenient or the interpretations and translations that let us be in the world and of the world. For example, Having premarital sex to check you and your partner's compatibility or studying a degree simply because they make the most money are ways that we trust ourselves to see and know everything when we can't even see our own backs on our own. Let us be reminded, fellow disciples, that we are called to trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understanding. We are not called to conform to the negative and unprofitable patterns of this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That way, we can know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. All the ways that are right and pleasing to Him. The advances in science and technology that we see today have given each of us the power to contribute something positive to society through the internet and various platforms. As a light of the world, why not contribute the light Christ has hidden in you to dispel darkness? Why become so excited by the attention you have called for yourself instead of the glory that Jesus receives when you stand for the truth? James chapter 4 verse 17 explains that therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, it is sin. If you identify as a disciple of Jesus in this generation, you should ask yourself this question, the way that Paul wrote it in Galatians 1.10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant or disciple of Christ. Once again, this was the Disciples Forum. I'm your host, Sister Lotosin, and we'll see you next time by God's grace.